So you know how some people really want to get ahead and they have all these amazing goals, especially if, if you're somebody who is, um, you want to move the world. You want to make a difference in the world. You care. You're highly motivated. You know what your why is. And you want to achieve all these things. Not only because you get to improve your own life and you get to perhaps achieve more fulfillment, more joy, more income, better quality of life. But you know that when you make these changes, you become a servant to other people. You literally get to change people's lives, regardless of what industry you're in, because we're all here to serve one another. But what if, even though you have all these goals and you know exactly what you want, what if something keeps getting in your way? This is what I want to talk to you today, because so often what I hear from many of my clients, especially when they first start working with me, they say, you know, I just, I feel like I need more motivation. Maybe I don't have enough willpower. Maybe I'm not working hard enough. And the word motivation keeps coming back. What if I told you that you do have enough motivation and you do have enough willpower and you have a strong enough why, but there's something else that you might be missing. And when you do this, when you get this, motivation will pour out of you and you will literally just move forward without resistance, without trepidation, without any self-doubt, you will just move forward. And this is what I call the emotional factor. Now, let's just take a step back because first of all, human behavior one-on-one, -on -one, the truth is we human beings don't like change. We don't. Why? Because it's so much easier to stay with what's familiar, even if it's really uncomfortable, because we know what to expect. So that's just human behavior. What? So perfect example of this, right? You probably know, maybe it's some of your friends, maybe it's neighbors you have or other people, you know, within um, your vicinity. Perhaps you know those people that are in an abusive relationship and... Typical example, woman gets abused, right? Verbal abuse, mental abuse, physical abuse. And we're looking at that and, and wondering, like, why doesn't she leave? You know, he's such a jerk. He doesn't care. He mistreats her so badly. Why doesn't she leave? Here's why. Because for, for this woman, because she doesn't really understand the human psychology, her own human psychology as deeply as I want to share with you today. For her, as of now, it is much easier and more comfortable to stay where she's at because change implies uncertainty. And when we human beings feel uncertain and we're not sure what might happen, it's just much easier to stay in the status quo. So that's just human behavior one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, let me just pull up my notes here because there was something else I wanted to share with you about that. Um, so yeah, change for so many of us is brings up fear, right? Afraid of the unknown. And this is most likely most likely, I'm not saying for sure because we haven't had a conversation yet, but this might be the reason why you might be afraid to change up until now or, or you haven't um, put yourself out there the way you should or want to, right? Now, here is another important thing. Before we actually change, here is something we have to get clear. Now, often you might hear psychology say, oh, you know, before somebody can change, we have to get to the root cause of why this problem was created in the first place. Yes, that is certainly valid and important. But before we can even do that, because here's the thing, before we can get to look at the root cause and how this problem got created, whether it's not having enough income, whether it's attracting the wrong people, not being in the relationship that you want, whether it's not having the body you want, 
before we can get people to change, before you can get yourself to change, we have to ask this most important question. And that is, what are the consequences for you to not change? Because we do things for two reasons. We either want to achieve more, get ahead, have a better life, right? Pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. Or we want to move away from pain. And here, please pay attention. I want you to write this down, pleasure or pain. And this is where we need to get clear in our own head, in our own life, in our own past. We need to ask these questions. What are the ramifications if I stay in the status quo, if I don't change? What are the consequences? What might be the risks? Another amazing question is, what have I missed out on already? What am I missing out? What might I be missing out in the future? And then, of course, another not easy to um, experience this question. This takes a lot of courage. Am I willing to settle for that? Is it okay for me to carry on just the way things have been? And of course, we can go a lot deeper, but these are some of the most profound questions you can ask yourself. Because unless you're moved and unless you're vivid, unless you are um, literally sick and tired, like for some people, they have to get sick and tired. They have to get so angry they have to be so like, I'm done, no more. This is the last straw. This is the last day. I'm no longer willing to go through X, Y, Z, pain, pain, pain. And that, when you can get to that point, that is actually a very healthy place to be at, believe it or not, because you had the courage to call yourself out and say, hey, is this good enough for you? Is this how you want things to be? And only when you can get yourself to a place where you're like, no more. And for so many people, they often cry. You know, they get to a place where they're just like at their wits end. They cry. They lock themselves in a room. They just want to isolate. They, they don't want to talk to anybody. By the way, those are all really, really good signs, believe it or not. Because that shows you, you are now you are now most likely ready to change. And the other next question, if, if you're ready for that, is, is it more risky for you to stay where you're at and just hope and pray that things might be better, continuing the same thinking strategy, the same doing strategy, the same feeling strategy, the same way that you've always been doing things, and so often I hear people say, yeah, but I've already done all the meditation and I've went to therapy and I, you know, went to all these self-development programs and I jumped around at Tony Robbins for all these and nothing has changed. Well, that is simply because the strategy right now that you might be implementing isn't working the way you want yet. That's all that means. You just haven't found the formula yet. So is it more risky for you to stay the way you're at and just... Again, hope and pray that maybe things are going to, maybe if I sign up to this other $5 course, maybe if I, you know, just read another self-help book, maybe it just meditate for longer, maybe things are going to change. Or is it more risky to say, you know what, I'm going to talk to somebody and find the answer and make some changes and get ahead much easier? That's the other question to ask. And the other human behavior one-on-one -on -one is we humans typically will do more to get out of pain than to gain pleasure. But again, I can't speak for you. For you, the big question is, what is the bigger carrot? You know, what is the bigger dangling carrot for you? Is it to get out of pain? Right, you're sick and tired of missing out on opportunities with your income. Maybe you hate your job. You hate your career. Maybe you think you're not cut out for it. Maybe it's getting way too competitive. You're stressed out. You're working 60 hours, you know, weeks. You have no free time. There's no quality time with your family. You can't even pay attention anymore. You completely shut yourself out. And if we keep doing that, what is that going to lead to? That's just literally hard, hard work. 
and we can continue doing hard work or guesswork or we can find a framework. And maybe you are one of those people that is motivated by pleasure, right? You're thinking about all the goals and, wow, I, I'm going to get this out of it and I'm going to get that out of it. Like we said, what are you missing out on? What is it that you want in your life that is non-negotiable, that you're like, now, this is my time, I'm doing this because, and the carrot for you then in, in, in that case is the pleasure, pleasure, pleasure that you want to get out of it. And so when you can find this about yourself, when you can have this conversation with yourself, that is when... Um, because again, step one is understanding the problem. What are the ramifications? What are the consequences? What are the risks if I don't change? What else will I experience that is painful? Maybe that, that I am embarrassed about, that I'm ashamed of, that I feel guilty about, that I feel angry about, whatever it is. But here, notice what I bring up. I bring up a lot of these emotions. And if you don't get emotional, whether it's frustration, impatience, you're sick and tired, you're done, you're watching everybody else succeed, and you're like, what the heck, what am I not doing? You have all the skills, you have the right, um, what do you call it, um, you have been trained thoroughly, so it's not a lack of skill set, it's not a lack of, lack of talent, it's not a lack of having the right systems in place. And this is what I so often run up with business owners who have a team. They provide their team with all the structures, the systems, the skill sets, the, you know, this is what you say, this is how you say it. Never paying attention to soft skills. What if that person doesn't know how to motivate themselves enough? What if that person doesn't know how to build a bulletproof mindset? What if that person doesn't know how to problem solve? What if that person doesn't really know how to communicate with another human being so that the communication actually goes somewhere? Just to name a few, what if that person doesn't have leadership skills? And this is something we all need for ourselves. And that often gets overlooked. And that's why your employers, your team, probably is not as motivated as they should be. Because even though you, you, you gave them all the structures and the systems, but what they don't have is how do they influence, persuade, and motivate themselves. And that is missing with so many people. So unless you can get emotional, unless you can, whether you're crying or you're laughing or you're, you're exuding excitement, See, that's what makes us human. If we're not moved, we're not going to move. There's no way you can motivate yourself with shallow goals and like, oh, yeah, I want to get to the next level. What does that mean for you? What would it mean for you to get to the next level? What would you achieve? Because What would you receive? What would be the rewards for that? And when you can get granular, I'm, I'm saying like super hyper detail oriented, in, in the suck and the good, right? The pain and the pleasure. When you can literally sit with yourself and get super clear, that's when you will begin to feel this energy that's called motivation. And now you will be moved. Now you will actually do something about it. And then we can always get, obviously, the next step then is to get to, wait a minute, how did that problem get created in the first place? Why aren't you as successful as you deserve to be? Why aren't you as fulfilled as you deserve to be? Why aren't you as happy? Why aren't you attracting the kind of partner you want? Why are you putting up with an abusive relationship? You know, why are you continuing to stay in a, in a career that's unfulfilling? Not easy questions to ask. And I'm not trying to be unsympathetic or mean or cruel but unless we, we have the uh, courage to ask these questions, we cannot expect ourselves, a human, very sensitive, highly tuned human being, is not going to move. You know, and so often, too, I, I hear, you know, especially professionals have these conversations and they want to stay surface level. And the truth is, if you want to stay surface level and be like, oh, it's not so bad, it's all right, it's, I, I, you know, I'm going to retire in 30 years, I, I can hang in there. I, I can't and will not work with somebody like that. If things are not so bad and, no, oh, it's, it's okay, it, not for me to say. 
But unless we get to the place where you're moved and you're like, I'm ready, I'm going to commit myself, I'm coachable, I'll do anything, I'll do anything you tell me, you know, and obviously there has to be a level of trust and for you to even say that, could I even possibly help you? And that's a whole other conversation. But stop judging yourself and blaming yourself for not being motivated. I promise you that is not the problem. I know it's not a lack of motivation. And please don't think it's a lack of willpower. It is not. I know you already have. In, and by the way, you only need enough willpower to get started. You just need a little, a couple of, couple of ounces of willpower to get started. Willpower is not what's going to keep you going. See, once again, we're looking at the wrong solution. Motivation and willpower are the things that will get you started. What will keep you going is the emotional hunger that you will bring up. And we all have a different flavor in that. We, there's all, you know, that can be so rich. And, and there's so many different nuances. And it's unique to everybody. And then, like I said, let's get to the root cause. What has caused this problem so that we can um, understand how to solve it? and not recreate the same problem in the future again. You know, and this is where so many people are missing out and so many people are um, really that inner critic becomes so harsh and, and so severe and so mean, undeserved. I have no problem. I have no problem with you criticizing yourself, judging yourself, you know, wanting yourself to get better and refine. There's nothing wrong with that. I think that's a very healthy mindset because that shows me you, know, you want more for yourself, for your life, for other people. That's a very healthy mindset. But you belittling yourself and shaming yourself and blaming yourself and, and keep staying in your head, that's what doesn't serve you. Because that's only going to make you feel small and bad and, and um, it's going to completely um, destroy your emotional uh, barometer, your emotional state, your physical state. And your ability to think clearly and to stay focused. And if, if you want to achieve peak performance where you show up in the office and you, whether it's on a phone call, whether it's a conversation you have, whether it's an interaction with a client, whether it's taking the next step, you want peak performance, you have got to nail this. You have got to understand your own psychology. What is it that moves you? What is it that shakes you? What is it that destroys you? And you don't have to have this conversation with me unless you want to. And trust me, if you do, be prepared because we'll go deep. I'm not going to sugarcoat things. I'm not going to tell you it's okay unless you think it's okay. Our human potential is unbelievably amazing. But they have not taught us in school. In school, forgive this term, they taught us how to be factory workers. What I mean by that is nothing wrong with being a factory worker. But what I mean by that is just do as I say, agree, don't ask questions, don't make waves, stand in line, lunchtime is at 12 o'clock, conform, conform, conform. Creativity, no, not welcome. Free thinking, not welcome. You have to have an A and it has to be this way. And we have been so brainwashed to, to, to be this factory worker that literally so much fear has been pushed into us that God forbid if we step out of line, we get to stand in the corner and the next step is go to the principal, next step is our parents are going to punish us, yada, 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 you get the point. And that's what we're all up against, that fundamental brainwashing. And I'm not, not trying to scare you or, or you know, uh, uh, again, be radical, but this is the truth. This is the truth. Here's the good news though. Here's the best news. Imagine if we can be brainwashed to be that militant, to be that soldier, to be that conformist. Imagine what else you're capable of. But this time on your terms, your terms, your standards, your conditions. Imagine if you did this consciously. In other words, as kids, we didn't even ask questions. It's just like, yeah, whatever, we just did. We didn't even know better. 
So literally, we became a victim of our uh, condition and upbringing. For some, it empowered them. For others, it totally disempowered and destroyed them. I'm one of those people, by the way. But imagine if you could use that same strategy today, now that you're an adult, you get to make your own decisions and you get to say, okay, what about me? What kind of life do I want? And we're going to use the same exact strategy, but this time we're going to do it so it works for you, not against you. Your own standards, your definitions of success, your conditions, whatever idea of, of life you have. And any human can achieve that. It has already been proven by our society how easy it is to change people. It comes down to using the right tactics, to using the right tools. And that all comes down to behavioral science and human influence. And that is what I'm trained in. Again, not to brag, but if I, if I can't, help people change powerfully, I'm useless to you, right? So I want to be useful to you. If you want to know more about this, if you are curious about this, if you want to share some of your feedback of this homework with me, please do. I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear from you if you had the courage to actually go deep with these questions and ask yourself and then write them down and face them and say, okay, where am I at? Am I willing to settle for this? And again, I don't know where you're at. So um, these are just some questions that I often get to ask uh, my clients probably in almost every session because if we don't even know what the problem is and what the problem means to us and what it has done to us, we're just going to always stay surface level. We can't solve problems like that. We have got to go deep down into your psyche, into your emotional state, into, into what moves you. And that's where you are in, incredibly unique. Everybody is unique in, in that sense. What drives you? What moves you? And that's where your motivation comes from. So I hope this served you. I hope this moved you. And I hope this compelled you to do a little bit of homework. Start somewhere. You'll be amazed at what you will learn about yourself when you, when you complete this or even when you just get started in this. Have an amazing day. I know this was loaded, but listen, I want to show you that whatever you want to achieve, you can and you can do it with much more ease and joy and flow and consistent focus and most importantly, consistent motivation. So let me know in the comments. I look forward to hearing from you. Bye.